concurrency in Swift allows us to perform multiple tasks simultaneously, making your application more efficient and responsive. For example, consider a software development team working on a new mobile application. In a synchronous or we can say non-concurrent setup, a single engineer would be handling all the tasks, like creating the login system. And then once that is done, then he can move to the user profile system. And then that is done, then he can move to settings and all other part of the application. This approach is very slow and it can get really frustrating if there is a delay in one task that holds up the entire project. Whereas in the asynchronous or in a concurrent setup, Multiple engineers can work on different features simultaneously. One engineer can focus on the login system, other can focus on the user profile, and the other one can focus on the settings. And this parallel task execution allows the team to complete the project faster and more efficiently. And that's what concurrency does for our application. It enables different parts of an application to run simultaneously, ensuring that app remains responsive and efficient. So for a mobile application, you can simultaneously make an API call and at the same time show some UI to our users without blocking their experience. Let's dive into some key concept of concurrency and understand how it works. In Swift, we have the async and await keywords to handle asynchronous operations. An async function allows us to perform tasks that might take some time to complete, such as network request. The await keyword is used to pause the execution of a function until the asynchronous task completes. Here in this example, we have this function fetch data, which fetches data from network. And to make it asynchronous, all we need to do is use this async keyword like this. And then to use this function, all we need to do is use this await keyword. And since fetch data is an asynchronous function, while this network call is an operation, we can show a loader or something else to our user on the main thread. And then we have task, which we can use to run a piece of code concurrently. It provides a simple way to execute asynchronous code and manage its life cycle. When you create a task, you can specify a priority like high, user initiated, medium, low, background, and utility. Task with priority set to high or user initiated will have the highest priority. And lastly, we have actors. Actors in Swift are like a special kind of class designed to handle concurrency safely. With the help of actors, we can manage shared data without the usual headache of dealing with threads and locks. Actors ensures that only one task can access or modify their data at a time. This prevents data races, which occurs when multiple tasks try to read and write shared data simultaneously. Creating an actor is simple. We create it like we create a class. So here we have a simple class counter with a variable count and increment method and a get count method. This class is not thread safe. And if we have many tasks which might try to access methods of this class at the same time, then we can run into race condition. How can we resolve that issue? All we have to do is change this class to an actor. And once this becomes an actor, it becomes thread safe. And each function of this class will become asynchronous, which means you will have to use await keyword to call its method. I know it could be a bit overwhelming, but do not worry. In the next video, we will look into an example to understand each of these concepts with more clarity.